Hi, in the second part of this user experience evaluation um, video lectures, I will try to address some of the concepts, try to understand the difference between usability or uh, user experience. I will also address the, what it means to understand the methods, the instruments, uh, but this will be briefly, the, the next sections will be more focused on those. Evaluation. So let's take a look at uh, some concepts of evaluation and let's try to understand those concepts. Usually we, uh, we hear about concepts like usefulness, usability and user experience. Uh, we also uh, hear about evaluation methods and, and tools. So basically objects of evaluation methods, category, metrics, data and skills. But do we know exactly what that means or do we understand what we are talking about? So let's let's uh, go deep into the concepts. Let's start with the usefulness, usability and user experience. What they mean? So, in terms of user experience, a good user experience depends on both pragmatic and hedonic qualities. What is it pragmatic and hedonic qualities? Let's see. If you look at usability, we, we see usability more uh, gasping the pragmatic qualities of use, user experience. And in terms of user experience, then we see that user experience focus more on the hedonic qualities of your product. But we don't, uh, if we don't understand what this means, then it's very hard what it means so usefulness and usability are mostly pragmatic qualities this means that we focus on to do goals we focus on the product we focus on our system and we try to find out what does work what doesn't work what are the errors um, and we look for uh, hedonic qualities we focus on a specific thing related with emotions. We look for pleasure and for experience. And we don't focus so much on the product, but we focus more. So, pleasure is related with hedonic. It relates with the two big goals, more with the user, the experience that we want to focus, the values that we want to transmit to the user. Usability concept uh, it means that it is the extent to which a product or a service can be used by specific users to achieve predefined goals in a specific context. What does this mean really? Usability means that we focus on assessing and evaluating a specific product and a service and we focus on three main dimensions. If the product is effective, efficient and satisfactory. Sometimes we also consider two other dimensions like, like learnability and memorability. Again, we can go a little bit further and try to measure its usefulness or the degree to which a product enables users to achieve his or her goals. Assessing, for example, users' willingness to use a product or a service. But nonetheless, the term user experience came out um, a few years ago, and this term tends to be distinguished or tends to be mis interpret with usability. They are two different terms from my perspective. So usability focus on, on measuring pragmatic things. It, it focuses on measuring um, effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction. And user experience focuses more 
on the emotion, the hedonic, hedonic qualities. What happens is that pragmatic uh, qualities are very easy or more easy to measure because they, they can be quantified. Hedonic qualities are not so easy to measure because they are related with emotions and emotions differ from the user to user and also are not so tangible as a pragmatic qualities. What, um, why did this user experience need uh, emerge? Uh, in the beginnings, uh, if we had a product in the market that we consider to be effective, efficient and satisfactory, that means that the product uh, were the probability of this product to be accepted was high. Nonetheless, with the growth of the market and the number of products and services existing, uh, these three quali qualities are not enough anymore because we have the same similar products with uh, the similar qualities. So what differentiates this product is the experience that the user has with the product. That's why we call it user experience. We need to measure more than just usability. We need to measure what is the emotion and what we want to transfer to the user by using our product. So, the user experience basically is the person perception and response of use or anticipated use also of a certain product or a service. We don't focus on the pro product per se, on the mistakes that uh, we can fix, but we focus on how people perceive and respond to the use of, of that product. So, how do we evaluate or assess this experience through emotions, through beliefs, to preferences, to perceptions. We mainly focus on behaviors and try to figure out what our product provides and what type of behaviors they provide to users. So, user perception mainly is the degree to which a user perceives a product or a service as providing a good experience. How do we evaluate that? We evaluate the user intentions to use certain product and service. If we look at the schema in terms of where usability stays and where UX uh, stays, we can more or less uh, set up that usability concerns with the product attributes and preventing errors. So usability focuses on the task oriented, how to prevent something for not working or to working in a more efficient or satisfactory way. User experience is something that you measure after using or before using, but mainly after using. So you concern in building positive uh, experience resulted from the interaction with the product. You concern more on reflection and you use methods that can provide that feedback for you. How to choose then a specific method as you so um, evaluating user experience can be as we will now address possible approach. So, in relating to methods and tools on how to evaluate user experience, this is very similar with the research process. It needs to be carefully planned. Use Usually, we categorize this in methods. So, in terms of uh, assessment, we have different methods and ways to assess um, our study conditions. We can 
have methods that uh, are formative just to get informed, are more summative uh, based on um, errors. We can uh, design a study, we can design an experiment, and we can use comparative studies to assess and evaluate and get feedback from the users regarding our services. When to use a survey? So you use a survey usually when you have questions that requires a large amount of uh, answers. So questions that are required to understand the, the answers or to better understand certain patterns, you need a large, larger group of answers. You also use a survey when um, you have questions that um, can be structured using Likert scale, for example, from one to five uh, rate. Uh, how, how much do you like this product? Um, or Smith structured questions like using a mix of, of uh, Likert scale or close answers with uh, small open questions. Please justify your opinion, for example. When to use a survey? So you use a survey usually when you have questions that requires a large amount of uh, answers. So questions that are required to understand the, the answers or to better understand certain patterns, you need a large, larger group of answers. You also use a survey when um, you have questions that um, can be structured using Likert scale, for example, from one to five uh, rate. Uh, how, how much do you like this product? Um, or Smith structured questions like using a mix of, of uh, Likert scale or close answers with uh, small open questions. Please justify your opinion, for example. When do you select a field study? So a field study usually are done when you want to go to the user's work or the user environment and observe how he behaves. So you want to explore more in-depth participants' meanings, what they intend to do, how they do it, what is basically, for example, if you want to, to create an application that helps the user to uh, wake up in the morning or do the, his tasks in the morning, you need to, to go to the field, to his home, and observe what he does when he wakes up and what he does until it, he goes out to work, for example. When to choose to conduct a lab study? Usually you do lab studies when you have to be careful with the conditions that you implement your study. So if you need to control the conditions, usually these lab studies are very much associated when you design experiments, for example. When to conduct an online study? The most known online studies that you uh, might know is the online surveys. When you do a survey that is spread uh, online to, uh, to, to gather uh, answers for a large no amount of participants. Online studies can be conducted as well when you have um, a time frame for example, for, for one week or two weeks, and you want to collect uh, participants' experiences, information, but you are not next to them. So you give them certain uh, uh, surveys or interviews or questionnaires for them to answer online. You can also... We can also have uh, and apply our uh, evaluation process in different time factors before using snapshot to interaction i already addressed this uh, before 
And we can also have different ways of measuring or um, different ways of reporting our feedback. So we can have diaries like self-report diaries. We can observe what the user is doing or we can directly measure like time tasks. Each method have different data that we can get and we can get that data with different scales. Mainly the, the scales can be more quantified or more qualified. So, like metrics uh, of time to complete tasks are more quantified or count of errors. Write, read, written reports are more qualified and schemas, audio records, video records, and so on. Other conditions that we need also to address. We need to provide and set up the conditions of use, the surrounding environments. We want to constrain our study or not. We want to do it in the field or we want to do it in the lab conditions where we can prevent any uh, additional um, things that come outside to, to be formed. We should not have also uh, factors like prejudice or previous experience from the user. We should choose the, the user carefully. Mainly, uh, if it is an IT-based user, we, we advise not to use that, that type of users. The best users are the more naive, the ones that do the questions that everyone does. We also need to fi figure out what type of demographic background will use our, um, our product. Mostly of those answers are um, set up when you do your profile or your persona and when you do your scenario. So when setting up your persona and that scenario, you are already selecting the users and uh, where do you want to do and perform your, your evaluation. In sum, as I mentioned before, in general, products and service evaluation can be uh, either formative or summative evaluated. In terms of low fidelity prototype or conceptual phase, we are not so rigorous in terms of uh, procedure and implementation. We apply a couple of methods to mainly to understand and get feedback on how to improve our prototype. So we can use one or two users at a time or uh, experts to better understand on how to design certain values, certain emotions and certain experience on our product mainly based on what we initially propose as a scenario or propose it as a persona to be using our service. During the high fidelity evaluation, then we should use more a mixed method and it should be more formal. The method of data collection should, should be uh, precise and we should do a pilot test definitely. And the evaluation procedure should be carefully planned in terms of what are the qualitative data that we want to get and what are the quantitative data that we want to get. If we want to assess more the uh, usability measures like the pragmatics or we want to focus more on the hedonic aspects.